right, welcome back. So uh, we'll take a look at that and then uh, how the political parties intend to alleviate poverty. What is their poverty reduction plan? Okay, sorry, just getting distracted. All right, so we do have uh, Olumide Braithwaite, who is a member of the Media and Publicity Committee of the Tinubu Shatima Grassroots Independent Campaign Council. They call it the ICC. Good morning, and thank you for coming on today. Morning. So morning. What, what is it with this? Uh, I mean, it could be confusing, <laughs> the ICC and the PCC. So what's the, how do they function? Okay, so um, the Presidential Campaign Council was flagged off at the uh, uh, villa, yeah. uh, I think, a few weeks ago. Um, it also coincided with the... Um, the party manifesto of our uh, party um, candidate, uh, Ashwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu. Um, the ICC is, uh, as the name implies, is the Independent Campaign Council um, for the grassroots. Uh, it's a novel structure um, that works in tandem with the PCC. Okay, structure. so I was going to ask, why do you need an independence council and do you work with so now that you say they work with the pcc it means yes. you cross you check your notes you take notes you ensure that you're on the same page absolutely in terms of the manifesto the message design the objectives of the campaign and yes. the narrative you put out yes literally in the same page absolutely what the icc um and this particular structure does mm -hmm. is to transmit the message to the rural areas uh, right to the grassroots. We intend to go door to door um, with uh, implementation uh, uh, and, and distribution of uh, materials and the message to uh, rural areas in their dialects. Um, we intend to set up in each state, in each of the 36 states and the FCT, media centers um, with a structure with the supervisors uh, and state coordinators something that's never been done before um, and uh, we believe uh, when we have in this structure we have um, the former um, uh, deputy uh, governor of Nassara state mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Silas Agar as our national coordinator our media department is 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 full of um, technocrats uh, top 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 people in their field um, and headed by um, Iliad and Tufam Eta. Um, and um, uh, we believe that uh, with this, uh, what I call a, a revolutionary setup, we're going to get that message across to. Speaking about the grassroots, which is where you want to focus on to ensure that messages get across to them, they have taken a lot of hit. Uh, the multidimensional poverty index, which was released last week, uh, you saw those figures 133 million Nigerians are poor at a higher rate than previously, over 60%. And they say of that figure, 51% of them are children, largely in the rural areas, the areas that you're taking your campaigns to, the grassroots. And then it's a lot more worrisome when people can't reconcile it. Maybe you'll help us out. Especially when they look and see figures such as FG budgeting 863 billion naira in poverty reduction and social intervention program. And then if you just cast your mind back when the government spent about 999 million naira daily for approximately 10 million pupils on that school feeding program. So when you look at those figures and then you look at this multidimensional poverty index, it's, it's difficult to reconcile those figures. So this, this MPI, many say this is our stark reality. So how do we then juxtapose what is budgeted, what is spent, and this figure coming through from the MBS. Well, thank you very much. Um, the MBS um, for a long time has um, been underfunded. Um, and so we have not been able to have accurate figures and statistics in recent times. Um, the recently released uh, report um, has come about as a result of um, increased funding um, and as you says as you said um, it, it is what it is it's a stark reality um, 
for the incoming government, uh, the priority has to be to use those figures uh, in a way that would alleviate uh, suffering for the poor, for the, house, uh, uh, for the poor families, and um, to, to, to be able to make um, policy reforms in order to, to accommodate that. Um, having said that, of course, um, uh, the, the economy is, is, is facing huge challenges at this time. Um, the, the, the Naira, uh, the Forex rate, um, the, 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 the lack of security, um, the, the oil theft, the, the uh, insecurity globally, the insecurity um, internally, um, the, the Ukraine-Russian war, all these are factors. And um, our situation has been exacerbated um, by the stark reality that our fiscal policies, uh, our macroeconomics don't add up. And, um, you know, the, 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 the message that um, our candidate, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, is bringing is one of reform. So, but that, that, that is an admission that in the last seven years, we've not been able to ensure that those figures add up. Listen, um, the economy uh, has not been in a worse situation uh, than it is now since 1983. Um, the uh, second quarter growth in, 19, uh, in 2021 was one and a half percent more than it is at this rate. It's, it's, it's about 3.5% now, as opposed to uh, last year. Um, and uh, our, our economy has, has never been in a worse state for the past four decades. And that's the reality uh, that we're facing today with, with so many issues at stake. Well, even before, the, uh, before now, before COVID, because part of the reason why the MBS decided to do this study was because of COVID, to see Correct. what effect COVID was going to have. But even before COVID, in 2019, the, the president had promised to leave to 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. It meant that he understood that a lot of Nigerians were poor. I mean, he, he wanted to leave 100 million Nigerians out of poverty over the next 10 years. Um, so people said, oh, it means that on an average, it means that you're targeting at least 10 million Nigerians out of poverty on a yearly basis if you're going to be lifting 100 million of them. Um, from what we now see, uh, because part of, part of the campaign promises of the APC when it was coming into power was to fight corruption, do something about the economy, and also tackle security. From, uh, uh, one of the biggest plans we were seeing uh, was something along the lines of um, the, social, the social welfare programs. And a lot of people felt that it had the power to be able to lift Nigerians out of poverty, especially since it was going to be tailored to the grassroots. Now, from what we see, it is difficult to measure whether there's been any impact whatsoever um, on, from what you know, the federal government has spent on poverty alleviation through those social programs vis-a-vis um, uh, -vis what we now have on ground as measured by the MBS, especially after COVID. Um, would you say that there's been a, a mismatch of resources vis-a-vis uh, -vis the problems on the ground, maybe not fully understanding it before we now even decided to target tackling poverty? It's a very informed question. Um, uh, the, the situation is very complex. Um, needless to say that um, some of our uh, uh, problems has been the implementation. Let's take the budget, for example. Um, uh, the budget uh, I would consider to be reasonable. It's not um, over optimistic, let's say, in which case you would have to have policy uh, statements in order to justify some of the expenditure. Um, but where you have provision um, for deficit 
and how you manage that is through borrowing, correct? Um, the 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 incoming government therefore needs to put in place a, 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 an environment that creates uh, confidence, reduces risk exposure, uh, attracts foreign investment, um, and um, all of this has to be uh, transparent. You have to have uh, a, a, an atmosphere of a transparency, which would create confidence in in the entire system. Um, I, I would concede to some extent um, your notion that there is an imbalance there. Uh, and this is where I feel that our candidate, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has the relevant experience um, with an economy of Lagos State, which is still the largest economy in, in, in Nigeria. Um, and by extension, um, uh, this is why I feel that he is perhaps the, the, the most competent candidate uh, to, to get us out of this rut. Um, and I sincerely be, believe that um, that will come to bear. When you talk about a rut, you know, if people have to remind you that your party is still in power at the center, and if there is a rot, I mean, it still has a responsibility to clean it. Uh, but, you know, and this is not just people now. We have a, a social... Well, I say a, um, a non-governmental organization, SERAP, is asking the federal government to probe, in fact, more precisely, the president, to probe the spending on social intervention programs. Because just as I highlighted earlier, people are wondering how it is that we could have spent so much trying to lift people out of poverty, and it doesn't look like we have any measurable results. Uh, they are saying promptly set up a presidential panel of inquiry to thoroughly impartially, effectively, and transparently investigate spending on all social safety net and poverty alleviation programs and projects executed between 2015 and 2022. Is this something that you support? Um, anything that will support transparency and rid um, uh, Nigeria of this tag of corruption uh, should be embraced. You think that there's been corruption in the implementation of some of these programs? Um, I didn't say uh, anything of that sort, but I do know where you are um, alluding to. I'm just asking. I mean, it's a question. You say anything to support uh, the removal of corruption? Yes, but you system. have to ask me a question mm. uh, relative to, to the background of the information that you've just given me. Mm. Um, but certainly, uh, I, didn't, um, I didn't make any admission to that effect, but... Um, we are all Nigerians, and we know that we have this uh, corruption tag, um, and it needs to be addressed. And I believe, again, that the, the person of uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu has a mission um, for his legacy, uh, and this is a priority and has to be a priority for any government that's coming into, into power in 2023. Have you heard the opposition party and how they, the major opposition party and how they're interpreting this? They said, oh, the APC said they want to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. And what they succeeded in doing was dragging 133 million Nigerians into poverty. Um, how is your party responding to this? Uh, if we are looking at mudslinging um, in politics, it's as old as the hills. Um, the other side or another perspective of that reality is to look at the PDP as having 16 years since our return to democracy in 1999 uh, and has steadily uh, declined the fortunes of this con country. Uh, our government, the APC, uh, was voted in by Nigerians because of the colossal corruption and mismanagement of of that party. Um, and what's happening today uh, is we shouldn't really um, concentrate too much on distractions. Uh, we really should focus on issues because we are at the precipice of um, very, very um, peculiar times in Nigeria. 
and all of us, all of us are stakeholders, uh, and we have to cast our votes for for. You for say the don't best. focus too much on distractions and focus on the issues. The issue at hand is that 133 million Nigerians are poor, yes. and your party is at the helm of affairs, yeah. and you have made grand promises, and it doesn't look like from the figures that you have delivered. Yes. Uh, if the opposition party is taking you to task on that, these are the issues. Mm. Well, you say the opposition party. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget that there's not one opposition party. There are several parties. Indeed. So you have to be case specific. What I'm trying to say is that let's look at the issues. The issues uh, is, are not just poverty. We have insecurity. We have unemployment. We have our uh, universities that, are, that, are, that have been closed. We have um, debts. We have multiple challenges. And these are the things that um, our candidate has been addressing. But all, all under the watch of the ruling party, your party. So, who do we blame for that? As I said, I would rather um, concentrate on um, salvaging uh, the fortunes of this country uh, rather than uh, laying blame. Because, I mean, that, we, we, that, 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 that is not the solution at this point. Okay. In other words, I mean, when your party goes out to campaign, they need to focus, they need to take your advice. Because we hear them still blame the opposition, which left power seven years ago, and it'll be eight years uh, soon. So that perhaps is what you're talking about. They need to focus on what the issue is and not keep going back to seven years ago. Mm -hmm. if we, it depends how you want to look at this thing. I'm looking at um, it the way you said it. Well, I could also say, uh, conversely, that uh, our candidate, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, uh, is the only governor since 1999, which was, uh, you have to get my, I, I'm a lawyer, I'm not a, an accountant, it's about uh, how many years ago? Uh, 23, 23 years ago. And still remains relevant and constant in the affairs of this country. Uh, how so? How so? Uh, well, he's, he's vying for the presidential seat. Several other people are vying. Uh, not any sitting governor from that time. The governor or former governor or the, the presidential candidate of the NNPP uh, was a governor mm -hmm. in 1999 alongside uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Mm. You could argue in terms of, uh, well, I, I must give uh, credence to um, Alaji Kwaku and so. Um, however, the impact um, of this on a nationwide basis remains to be seen. Um, we are at, a, at an, an exciting moment in our, um, in our democratization, um, and I, I enjoy all Nigerians to, to be astute. We are, we are a nation of tremendous potentials, uh, and I believe that um, the personality, the, the dynamism, the, the business savvy um, of our candidate is what is needed at this time to, to, to move us forward. Yeah. But do you understand when some Nigerians mm -hmm. say that, look, they, they want to try something else? Especially given what they faced in the last seven years, they've looked at several promises from your party, from power generation that hasn't met. They looked at the current situation of the economy. Many of them feel a lot could have been done differently. 133 million people now in the poverty net. So it's quite understandable, I reckon, uh, when they say, look, why don't we just try something else? I mean, I also understand that as a ruling party, nobody wants to lose. No party wants to lose election. But when people say, look, from what they currently face, they would like to try something else. How does that sit with you? Um, that, that is uh, a very reasonable and um, normal uh, assumption, given the facts that we've, we've been discussing on this program. Um, uh, it was change that brought about um, a change in political parties. Um, and um, in as much as um, the APC has been in government for the last seven years, um, a new dawn um, also beckons uh, in, in terms of the personality um, 
that would be manning this, uh, this uh, government. And not just that, um, the, 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 the team, the, 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 the personalities that are surrounding uh, this movement are such that are capable, um, uh, more so um, motivated towards um, achieving positive change. But, all right, I understand we need to go to break uh, soon, but at the moment, why, what kind of conversation goes on within the party in terms of what specific plans? What, is there any such thing as a magic bullet to get this economy back on its feet from your party's plans? Mm. I, 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 I don't think there is a magic bullet, as you put it. But um, I think um, policy reforms have to be a priority. Um, that has to be accompanied by um, the management of our fiscal policies. Um, it has to uh, permeate um, into um, uh, the, the application uh, against a, a huge population that we have. Um, and um, again, I think that um, the, the manifesto uh, talking about um, economic reforms and um, some of the, um, the, the plans that were unfolded in that um, um, have addressed some of those issues. If not. All right, we'll look at some more specifics and bring other parties into this conversation when we return in just a moment. Do stay with us. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, uh, let's bring in our colleagues in Lagos. They do have questions for you, Mr. Braithwaite. Go ahead, guys. All right, thank you, Chamberlain. Uh, just listening to I mean, the conversation over the past uh, couple of minutes, I, I sense that it's, it's a bit difficult, really, going through uh, this terrain. Because for a lot of Nigerians, they see the figures, the poverty figures, 133 million under the watch of this government, yet... Uh, your party is asking for another four years through the presidential candidate uh, of your party. And uh, it's, it's difficult. I sense that even uh, in, in the way you approach the questions. But Nigerians, you will have to face it nonetheless. And I'd like you to speak to Nigerians. Maybe another chance to get them uh, to, to at least maybe see from your side why you think they should give your party another chance uh, seeing the figures, the poverty figures in particular. So if you could speak to Nigerians regarding that, they have seen 133 million people in poverty. Don't forget, in 2019, the poverty index showed 82.9% million Nigerians. In 2022, the multidimensional poverty index is showing 133 million. So speak to Nigerians. Why, seeing that figure, they should still cast the ballot for your party? Thank you very much uh, for that. It's relevant. Um, I did um, give a background uh, for the Nigeria uh, Bureau of um, Statistics uh, that has been largely um, unfunded. Those figures don't come as a surprise. Um, those figures, as, compare, as compared to the figure that you just mentioned of uh, 89 uh, um, million, uh, isn't accurate or wasn't accurate at the time because of funding. Um, and what... Um, uh, our candidate, Ashu Ajubala Mentinubu, uh, is going to do with those figures is going to um, make provision. Uh, for example, um, the U.S. government, um, by law, is the um, largest uh, contractor in the world. And between 10 to 20 percent uh, of the budget um, is provided to accommodate a small uh, and medium-sized uh, businesses by law. Therefore, the ripple effect would translate into more jobs, 
uh, for unskilled workers uh, in the job market. Um, the legacy, or rather the, the record of our candidate in Lagos State, which is the largest economy in Nigeria, speaks for itself. Uh, despite several constraints, um, uh, he was able to uh, revolutionize the uh, IGP um, and uh, massive infrastructural development. Um, he is by far the most um, qualified uh, in terms of international posture um, when we want to access uh, international uh, concessions and uh, possesses a wealth uh, of experience needed at this time. Um, uh, it is okay for the opposition to lay the blame squarely at the feet of this government because uh, the truth of the matter is uh, they are equally, uh, if not more, by the mere fact of duration of, uh, of time spent in government mismanaging uh, the fortunes of this com country, accumulated over time. Uh, and these were some of the issues that this government inherited. Let's not forget that. Uh, and so we stand by um, our, 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 our confidence in, in Ashwa Jubala Metinumbu's uh, competence uh, and uh, uh, wisdom okay. uh, to be able to, to fashion programs to get us out of well, this economic there, there, there are countless um, questions, Mr. Mr. Braithwaite, around the, question, the issues that you have raised. I mean, one could go on and on on how the government has collaborated with states in getting some of those things done that you know, the government perhaps intended to do. But we'll talk about that perhaps in the course of time. In the meantime, Adedeji Doherty also joins us this morning. He is chairman at the Cocoa Presidential Campaign Council in Lagos, and he is also a former governorship aspirant who joins us virtually. Thanks for joining us this morning, Mr. Doherty. Let me assume that you have been listening to Mr. Braithwaite all the while and perhaps may want to respond to a thing or two. But then you may begin by answering the question that he has raised, that whatever economic woes Nigerians are suffering now, the foundation was laid by your party before 2015. Mr. Doherty, can you hear me? Okay. I guess we'll continue uh, with uh, Mr. Braithwaite in the meantime. So let me, ask, let me bring that question to you again about the fact that the president said that back in 2019 that my, my colleague responded to, uh, alluded to earlier when she asked a question in 2019, that in collaboration with states, the federal government was going to do everything they could to pull out 100 million Nigerians out of poverty over the spread of 10 years. The question of whether or not it would be done couldn't be done without the states. That was contained in the speech that the president made. The question then is, given that the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria made a statement and expectedly all all paraphernalia of government, all the machinery of government, ministries, departments, and agencies were supposed to go and follow through in collaboration with states, he said. If your government could not collaborate with states to pull Nigerians out of poverty, what's the assurance we have that the next administration will? Um, thank you very much. Uh, the assurance lies in our collective uh, burden as Nigerians. Um, this is our only country. Uh, we either salvage it or we don't have anywhere else to run to. Um, let's not um, lose sight of the fact that uh, we have a global phenomenon um, going on. Um, and there is insecurity generally everywhere. Um, our party, and more so our 
presidential candidate, Ashwajibola Metinumbu, has uh, consistently postured himself uh, with the plight of the masses and Nigerians in general, devoid of uh, ethnic ethnicity or religious sentiment. Um, he has been magnanimous uh, in his track record uh, towards fulfilling some of the policies that he has introduced. Um, I dare say um, you can examine some of these records and statistics. Um, and as the transition, as we count down towards the elections, uh, I am confident that uh, some of these uh, promises, some of these campaign, um, and they're not slogans, but as enshrined in, in, in his manifesto, will be further scrutinized and will be further defended um, accordingly. Um, and this is the reassurance. This is what Nigerians can take uh, back home uh, because of the personality and the personnel um, that come uh, as, uh, as a, a corporate uh, team, if you like, uh, towards 2023 and the future of this country. Braithwaite, I'd like you to speak to us specifically now about uh, the issues, because it's quite, it's mind-boggling to see that in spite of all of the resources we have in this blessed nation called Nigeria, human capital, 200 million people, that, that alone is enough uh, to trade and do better than others. We have, you know, natural resources as well. And, you know, I could go on and on. Help us understand, does, does your candidate have a firm grasp of why you know, Nigerians are poor, 133 million, in spite of the policies, the programs of this current government. Clearly, it looks like, you know, throwing money at these things don't work, as we've seen with all these uh, social investment programs and all of that. In spite of that, the poverty persists. So tell us what your candidate has been able to find regarding why Nigerians are poor, specifically now. Why would you say Nigerians are poor? in spite of all of this, from the findings of your candidate, as you said, he's had time to study these things. Well, um, I think uh, uh, every Nigerian has a right to, to ask those questions. Uh, certainly, um, our, our revenues um, in recent times have been depleted um, with oil theft uh, rising, um, food uh, costs, food insecurity. Um, and um, our candidate has already uh, mentioned uh, that um, he will uh, introduce uh, money lending schemes, credit facilities, uh, in addition to um, policy changes that would encourage um, for example, in, 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 with the CBN, uh, more transparency in the management uh, and distribution of um, foreign exchange um, using platforms with um, OMOs, uh, operational uh, money uh, uh, operators, um, and so on and so forth. Um, I believe that... Um, uh, he has the wealth uh, in the commercial aspect uh, to be able to engineer some of these um, economic programs to, to get us out of, uh, of our situation. One other thing that along that same line, you haven't spoken to the, the, the fact that the government couldn't significantly, efficiently partner with states. There are some of them, perhaps, who have been waiting for this, this much-talked-about collaboration that the president promised in that speech. You haven't spoken to that one, the fact that the federal government couldn't work with states. Now, if the current government could not work with states, are there things responsible for that which perhaps your candidate is aware of? What are those things responsible for the, the, the fact that that collaboration between the federal government and states could not happen? 
Uh, well, I'm not sure um, which states you're referring to. Uh, they could be opposition states. That could be a reason for that, perhaps. But let me um, flip that uh, a little bit. Um, Lagos State, for example, for many, many years, didn't receive, receive any allocations from the federal government. And our candidate was the same governor who still increased and turned around the internally generated revenue of Lagos State by 600%. 600%. So these figures, these are facts. These are historical facts, and you can check them. Um, excite, should excite Nigerians. But the local government didn't receive anything that time? Well, I, I, I wouldn't know. I mean, okay, well, Mr. Doherty, I think he's set for us. So let's try him out. Uh, Mr. Doherty, good morning. Can you hear us? Hello? Can you hear us, Mr. Doherty? Because we can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. All right, well, if you could just respond to this Lagos State big part where uh, he did say that, well, the reasons why he's uh, optimistic and thumping his chest that the candidate of the APC has all it takes, given how he was able to manage the resources of Lagos at the time, and so there shouldn't be any cause I for worry. Can you still hear me? You are breaking. You are breaking. How about now? Is it any better? Yeah, a bit better now. Okay, so uh, uh, compared to what part of, I don't know what part of the conversation you were able to pick up, but what is your party trying to do now, uh, especially with the ruling party saying, well, they want to keep it going because they think they have a better plan than your party? Well, um, uh, I'm happy, you know, first of all, I'd like to thank you for bringing me on today. Um, the PDP has always been the custodian of democracy in Nigeria. And as you know it, uh, Chamberlain, um, the PDP has been, um, was the one that uh, transited Nigeria into this democracy we're all shouting about. Remember that, you know, uh, in 1998, the PDP took over the hands of affairs of Nigeria. And uh, Olusha Gwabasanjo came into uh, the, uh, the pandemic uh, situation that we had in the country. And um, he put a team together, which included uh, definitely his running mate, Atiku Abubakar, who was at that time the, um, the head of the economy. He was the one that marshaled the economy that the PDP was trying to implement in the country. And remember that um, during that time, the, uh, the um, um, uh, uh, coups by the military was very much in vogue. So I, I, for, 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 to start up with, you must give the PDP that credence that uh, was able the party that was able to stabilize democracy in Nigeria. And these two gentlemen were the pioneer um, uh, members of the PDP that did this job. Having said that, um, I don't think the All Progressive Congress uh, should even be vying for anything right from um, 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 the, the presidential up to the local government right now, especially in Lagos State. Uh, Lagos State, everybody, you know, with your, um, with the gentleman um, uh, in your studio today, you are, I'm talking about the, the, um, the um, what do you call it, the uh, local government funds that were withheld. The local government funds were withheld for a particular reason. And at the end of the day, um, Tinubu has increased the, the IGR of the state, but at what cost? 1,500 companies um, went under. Um, I remember Dr. Trichy Bates of blessed memory. Some of his companies too were definitely affected. And we know that, <laughs> you know. So um, I believe that the PDP has already retraced its steps. We have made mistakes along 
the road um, to to um, uh, to making Nigeria great. And I think um, it is time we stabilize this country and give this country a uh, another give PDP another chance to um, make good its promises that it has always made. Well, I know that one of the candidates has challenged both parties, all the candidates, as a matter of fact, to a debate, face-to-face -face debate. Let's go to Lagos. I think I'll call you. Wait a minute. But, Mr. Doherty, will your candidate take up that gauntlet? Will he? <laughs> you mean the debate? Yes. Our candidate does not, you, you know, you see, uh, Atiku Abubakar, as you know, Chamberlain, oh, come on, you, you understand? Um, we all we all have gone through the PDP. You have gone through it, and the whole crew of did, Channel did TV you say have I gone, have through, gone it. through it. <laughs> yes, you, you, all, you all interviewed our oh, different candidates okay. at different times. I get you now. You understand? <laughs> you, Channel TV I has been as I long as, almost that. as long as democracy. Oh, okay. Well, let, let me. You see. understand? So, definitely our candidate will be there. Definitely. Okay, that's an admission. How about you? Will your candidate participate in a live televised debate? Absolutely. Why not? Um, that, that has been the, the, the format. And um, uh, let me just say that, um, unknown to many Nigerians, um, Bola Ahmed, Tenniso Bola Ahmed, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed, Tinubu's. Schedule is is grueling. His day okay. starts. His All day right. starts at ten. All right. Well, well, Typically, well, well, let, me, let, me, let me just let me just we, we, just within the time. Who hasn't said a thing? Yes, but you asked you asked you asked me a question. So yeah, let me well, just. You, answer. you say yes, he will. Let me just learn. But don't worry, we'll, let, we'll come back to you. But, okay. Uh, let's go to Lagos. We have a guest there as well. Guys, go ahead. Thank you, Chamberlain. For for a second, I I, I was trying to check my records to say when did you leave channels television for the PDP. I guess um, that's been laid to rest. Ladipo Johnson joins us this morning. He's spokesman for NNPP, uh, Kwan Kwaso presidential campaign. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Um, you saw something on the front page of the paper, and um, the first thing you're saying, it's going to kill businesses. But then there, there is one that I'm sure you are aware of that everyone is talking about, the poverty figures multi-dimensional poverty. I think that point needs to be made. It's multi-dimensional, but not just poverty, multi-dimensional poverty figures that the federal government released. Um, exactly what's your thought on that and what do you think has been left undone that your candidate has in plan? Thank you. Um, well, unfortunately, we're where we're at. Um, and um, that's a lot of... Um, um, blaming going on um, on all sides but um, the sad fact is that um, over the years things have um, plummeted I'm talking about the welfare of the people the state of the economy yes we had the um, global pandemic and there are other things that have um, added to this but um, the bottom line is that you try to look at what has been done or been left, left undone. How do you react to these um, incidents if you're in government? The first thing I'd like to say is Nigerians have had to tighten their belts several times. I don't see one thing that this government has done to cut its costs. I agree that we have the National Assembly on one side, but even the executive arm, what have they done in the past seven years to cut the cost of governance? What do you think should have been done? I think that government, uh, the perennial buying of vehicles, you look at the budget every year and you see um, certain heads that come up with the same thing. Uh, then you see the cost of travel. There, there are many things. When Rabiu Konkozo was um, governor of Kanu, and he said it about a week or so ago, he made that bold statement. He said, for instance, I will not receive any security votes. Because he didn't do it when he was governor. So it's just a little thing, a drop in the ocean. Um, Olumide mentioned oil theft. Um, and things like that. And that's, those are the major things 
that have um, beaten away at the revenue base of a country. That, that, that's one side of it. The second side of it is if we do not, and it's the major, major part of it, if we do not get a hold on the insecurity, then you cannot attract investments. You cannot even, local investment itself, you, will, you and I will not be able to go to Zamfara and invest. You can't do that. And when the revenue is not there, you can't even begin to talk about, okay, it's small and medium-sized businesses, or it's going to be the uh, larger know, corporations. You, you also remember that everything. the federal government has talked about the fact that there's a revenue challenge of yes. the federal government. There has to be. Okay, so, and you also reference this oil theft, you know, issue of the federal government as well. So, in speaking about the revenue, if you agree that indeed Nigeria has a revenue challenge on our hands, how will your government, the government of your, your candidate, Look, tackle it? It's a simple thing. Anyone who is not willing to or who is unable to face the insecurity problem, now specifically we're talking about oil theft. Tell me that oil theft can occur without a super tanker, for instance, coming into your waters. Just, just that. Can they come in without the customs and the um, Nigerian Navy? You, you understand? So the first thing we're looking at is leadership by example, leading from the front. I keep saying, no matter the genuine intentions that our press, current president has, we had problems and everyone could see. And for years, he didn't touch his, um, his generals or those the service um, yeah, the service chiefs and everything. So these are the things there. But technology, most importantly, because you tell me that everyone has said the same thing, most importantly it is leadership from the front, zero tolerance. Right. And if you cannot do that, then your government will not, the debt burden is too much. I mean, yes, the sir. candidate was Minister of Defense at some point. Yes. But, uh, let's break this down, really. Let's maybe yeah. go back, yeah. way back. I'm talking 1999 now. And, I mean, we can tell what a person will do based on what uh, the person has done. They always say, your candidate has been a governor uh, in yeah, Nigeria. And, times. I mean, this poverty conversation is not just the... Not President, today, yes. That will resolve yeah. poverty. Even I mean, the states. States yeah. and local governments local have governments, their roles yeah. to play. And I know your party, the NMPP, is based on this uh, Talakawa. Uh, yeah, for the masses. The, yeah. For the masses. And, you know, there's this talk out there that poverty in Nigeria is deliberate. Keeping people in poverty is yeah. deliberate because it oils that political machine. You need people who can vote for you, who you can subdue such that, you know, the usual handouts will be enough to get them to vote. So your party is based on that principle. And I'd like maybe to defend or speak for your party because if people are taken out of poverty, I wonder who the Talakawas, I mean, the Talakawas will definitely no more be there to support your party. So, <laughs> no. I mean, it, some will say maybe that's a, a, some sort of contradiction. That's, so speak um, to that. That's like saying that um, if we begin to um, provide proper electricity, there's those who are selling generators won't um, be in business. Some people say that. But will but they be in business? No, no but they, they, should, go, business they anyway. should go into some form of other business, get involved in the electricity, maybe gas or what have you. It's easy to you say, see. what happens to the stock that they've imported? Ah, no, but no, speak no. to that, but I think it's really, a very important really, point. Really, 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 um, the, the bottom line is this. You're right. Um, we have, um, much like late, um, let me reference it as well, late Tunji Braithwaite of blessed memory, um, taking a dig at Olumide here. Um, his father was um, one who cared about the masses, and I went through his father as well, politically, at, at some stage. And um, we believe that, I think you, was, you, you alluded to the fact that we have a market of 200 million people, I, I overheard before I came into the studio. And that market has extended, expanded, because of the African Continental Free Trade Zone Area um, Agreement that we're into. Um, if you really want people to sleep at night, then you have to make sure that even those at the bottom of the ladder, the social ladder, have access to free, to good health, um, education, etc., etc. 
So the programs of Konkoso, when he was governor, mostly were mostly geared towards ensuring access. At that level, he was involved in free education, free school feeding. Um, they have a, a peculiar problem in the core north. And for that reason, he had special buses for the girl child, special um, school uniforms, picking them up just to encourage um, people to go to school. So yes, they have that. The problem with, um, at the moment is balancing the state of the economy now, the debt burden that we have, with those programs. So is it, is it to the benefit, pardon me, of the politician to have people lifted out of poverty? That, that's it the question. Is, no, because no, 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 hang on. It is to the benefit of the average Nigerian. It is to the benefit of the altruistic politician. You see, if you're in government and you've been in government for seven years or eight years or 16 years, you should be able to turn to the people and say, see what I've done. So how is it we Come. have this, but burden, we this haven't. huge burden of, of poverty? In the north, it's even much more. Yes. Well, let, let's not deceive ourselves. It's all across the country. Yeah. But the burden definitely is much more in the north. And we're talking about people, not yeah. just figures. People, mm -hmm. 133 million. So why is it that you have, I mean, I imagine a politicians where they are all altruistic, but we still have that poverty rising. <clears throat> the poverty keeps rising. One, because of what you're alluding to, most politicians have weaponized poverty. They keep Nigerians in poverty, and from the poverty of the belly, it moves to poverty of the mind. And then when they come out again, like they've done now, they come out, they spend money that have been, has been stolen from government. And then the man who is so hungry begins to look at you. You're not in government. You're approaching them. You're talking about manifestos and everything. And they say, you're speaking English. Now these people are giving them rice. They're giving them this. They're giving them that. Oh, we can see that there are banners everywhere. How much is one billboard? I agree that um, um, campaigning isn't cheap, but that in itself is a horrible, horrible thing. Let me ask you specifically. Yeah. What will your candidate do? I mean, Cardi has asked you the question, but yeah. let me be a little more, more, spe more, direct, more specific, yeah. more direct. What will your candidate do, who is a northerner, to reduce the poverty figures in the north? Good. The first thing, as we said, everything now is the issue of insecurity. You do everything together, but the insecurity and security of the insecurity country. Insecurity yeah. is enabled by poverty. Security agencies have told us. Definitely. So definitely if, we know that. If we have had poor people in the north over the, all over the years, mm. and, and it is general, but as the figures, the data has shown us, it's a lot more prevalent in the north. Yes, so in parts of the what north. will your candidate do specifically? What kind of collaborations, what kind of interventions, what kind of policies is he going to initiate that is going to directly, specifically address poverty figures in the north? Yes. Firstly, what we said was that um, regarding security, we are going to have a surge. As you know, in, Surge of what? Of the military, of the police, and whatever. We are going to increase the figures drastically so that we can squeeze these people out, um, take up the spaces. When I say spaces, the forests, um, coastal areas, um, well, the border areas as well. When you have this, because at the moment, I make bold to say we don't have proper collaboration between the immigration and the customs and the military. Our borders are porous. I know you're going to spend money doing that. Um, also with technology, drones, and what have you. That is that. As that is going on, you now, the intervention you're talking about, and um, uh, it's not trader money that we're talking about here. You have to begin to, there are 20 million children, basically, and most of them from the north, out of school. You have to begin to mop them up. We have to begin to mop them up. We have to begin to intervene in education. Now, we have a program. It is a radical one. 
um, if I get it right now, it's called the um, Community Participi Community Participatory um, um, Something Committee (CPRC) that Kwankozo has proposed in the blueprint. Now, this is so radical because he's saying that in the 8,900 and something wards, you will have these committees. Let me just rush through that because they, yeah. I mean, we have to go to Abuja. Because okay, the sorry. Sorry. The school figures very controversial. Government has said it's way less than that. Is a 12 million. Fantastic. Paragraph. If it is, that's and I know your right. your candidate challenged other candidates to a to debate. A debate. Yes, he I said that I, yesterday. Will he be attending? Perhaps if others drop out and say, "Well, we're busy and all of that." No, he will. He will. Yesterday he was with the Guild of Editors. So they he, invited him. He went there, and I was going to say when Olimide was speaking that his people have already issued the statement that Ashiwaju is not going to be participating in any debate so you don't or whatever. Believe what he said. No, Olimide is talking. He's saying what he believes in. But I'm saying that Festus has had issued a statement that. Um, Ashiwaju wouldn't be participating. And I'm saying that, don't come and tell us about the manifesto that the maker, purported maker of the manifesto, is not willing to defend in front of Nigerians. It's as simple as that. Konkozo will defend anywhere. Well, over to you, Nakuja. All right. So, Mr. Olumide, you've been found out. Why <laughs> wouldn't your party defend those manifestos before Nigerians alongside other candidates in the televised debate? Well, first of all, let me... Um... <clears throat> say, uh, send my uh, regards to both um, uh, Mr. Doherty and Mr. Johnson. They are both um, fine gentlemen uh, from illustrious families in, in Lagos. And I have tremendous respect for, for the both of them. Um, uh, we are in opposing uh, political parties. Um, and uh, as we continue to chew over uh, events, um, uh, uh, political debates uh, are what they are. Uh, if you look at the U.S. Do you believe in them? Because Chim you talk about Ch the U.S. Do you believe in them Chim a lot in the U.S.? Chim you mentioned the U.S. just now. Chamberlain. You can't rush me with, with these questions because you just asked me a question. I'm but not you keep. You. Time but, is the one rushing. Yeah, but then you're interjecting. We're out of time. But you're interjecting. You've just asked because me a question. Have other two people. You have two then you, people. Then you know we, that. we will come back and address those okay, issues. Okay, so tell us. Sure. Why will he not participate in the debate? It's straightforward. Yeah, that was what I was trying to to Go address why before will he you. Not? So, um, so debates um, are one thing. Campaigning is another thing. You will agree with me. Um, that the responsibilities of uh, government uh, don't center around debating. We can continue to debate. We have major issues at stake. And our so candidate that, prefers, we prefer to concentrate on those. Uh, the issue of debates, when they come, as of when they come, we will address them uh, as and when but you issued, they you, arise. You just heard the gentleman talk about your party issuing a statement saying they will not participate in a debate. Yes, that's a Even statement. Even though you, you, you prefer that debate because you initially said, of course he will, because you subscribe to that kind of scenario. Uh, well, now, you're, 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 making, you're making some assumptions. You but, uh, I asked no, you no, no, previously, no, no, and no. you said, of course you no. will participate. Yes, I said. I, I, so I'm what on am record. I making up? No, no, you're making assumptions to the effect that um, that might be a blank statement indefinitely things we have three months towards the end of the elections you know I only people, what you said that pe yes you people, will. people need to look at things in, in proper perspectives and we'll, we'll get to those all right I'd like to hear the viewers perspective on what you said if we was making them up mr. Doherty your final word on this one should you be worried about the 5g the, the uh, integrity governors who call themselves a uh, group of five now because they seem to be talking at the heart of your party because votes is a lifeblood of political parties, I reckon. Yes, thank you very much. Um, before I get to that, I'd like to say something which I've noticed. Um, I've seen Ladipo on one end and I've seen Illumide on one end. And I can tell you very much that they're struggling to defend their parties because they're, they know they have PDP in their blood. You know, and um, they're both from PDP. They're extracts from PDP. I know I can see Ladipo uh, laughing there. 
You understand? And then we've all, we've all inter, well, I mean, you know, we, 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 we all have some kind of ideology about this country. And I'm happy that um, uh, they are where they are today. I'm happy that um, they are doing what they're doing today because um, we need the new generation of uh, politicians with good ideas to come up. Now, I haven't said that. Um, yeah, we were talking about the G5, you know, but before we go into that uh, for the G5, I would also like to say this. Alanji Atiku Abubakar is an experienced politician and has gotten the experience of running this country. Full stop. Every other person has worked with Alaji Atiku Abubakar, including Bola Ahmed Tunubu. Bola Ahmed Tunubu was in the PDF. Right, Mr. Dawati, we need to go. Alaji Abubakar. Now, we, what we, I would like to say about the G5, what I like, let me yeah. talk about the G5. Oh, it looks like we lost you. You understand? And I okay. believe that they are all going to come back and agree. Wike is going to agree with PDP because all his, uh, um, all his uh, candidates are members of the PDP. The all right, gentlemen. With the we and, need to go. I'm afraid we're people. completely out of time on this one. We're all, we're all, we're all coming in. All, all right, coming. we hear you. Uh, but we have to thank all of you for coming in today. Mr. Deji Doughty of the PDP. Uh, Mr. Lumide Braithwaite of the APC and Mr. Ladipo Johnson of the NMPP. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on today. We will be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Yeah.